Hi, Dr. Ryan England coming to you from Daytona State College in my data structure series. And today's data structure is the queue. So the concept of the queue is extremely straightforward. You would know it as line, as in standing in line. You arrive at a line, you get in the back of the line, you proceed through the line until you get to the front, and then you dequeue off the front of the line. There's two methods associated with the queue, in queue and dequeue. It's really that simple. Now, each of the individual nodes associated with the queue um, are going to be an object unto themselves. In the model that I'm going to use here, I'm going to use doubly linked nodes. So the nodes will have a pointer to last, a pointer to next, which is essentially a pointer to the node on one side of it, a pointer to the node on the other side of it, an ID and a content. What I'm going to show you is some of the logic of how you actually create the queue itself. So the queue itself is an object. Each node is an object, the queue is an object. My queue that I'm going to design here will have three properties, last and first, which essentially will be a pointer to the last node in the queue and the first node in the queue, and length, which will be a, a, a numeric integer, which is the length of the queue. So we can look at the queue by really looking at the state of the queue so you can understand what it is. The queue's got three properties, first, last, and length, and if it's a Q of length 0, then those the first and the last would point to null because it doesn't point at anything. But now let's in Q a node. And I'm going to give the node an ID A. But remember, when you in Q the node, the, the, um, the node itself is just new node. So what's the process here? Well, I'm going to point the Q's first pointer at the new node, the Q's last pointer at the new node, and increment the length. Not too hard. Now the Q state has progressed so that the values of first and last are pointing at node A, which when it was passed to you was new node. Remembering that I can't access this node by its ID in this case, it's just the new node that was passed to it. Now we're going to use, we're going to actually use A here because we want to know what node we're really pointing at. Just understanding that you can't access it by A dot something. Let's enqueue another node with an ID of B. So how do we do this? Well, the queue's first pointer, okay, the first node in the queue, pointer last, which is actually a dot last, is now going to point at the new node. So the first node in the queue's last pointer called last is going to point at the new node. The new node's next pointer is now going to point at the first node in the queue, which is a. So new node dot next is a. Q dot last is now set to the new node, so now the new node is Q dot last because it got n queued and the length is incremented. Which by the way gives you a Q state now if we look at this in a little bit more detail, the last column here where you have values of, of A and B, which is the, you know, the node IDs, A and B, A dot next is null, A dot last is B, B dot next is A, B dot last is null, should make sense. The front's pointing to nothing, the tail's pointing back at nothing, but they're pointing to each other internally with a length of two. Let's enqueue another one and see what happens. Okay, logically speaking, the new node's next pointer, okay, remember the new node's going to get enqueued onto the tail of the, of, the, of the queue, so it's going to point at the last node in the queue. Makes sense. The queue's last pointer, pointing backwards, is going to be pointing, okay, so that Q dot last, well, Q dot last was B, it still is B, we haven't changed it yet, it's going to point backwards at the new node, which is now C, which is going to go onto the tail, and Q dot last after you've done those two things, it's pointed to the new node, and now I've got A, B, and C, A being the first, C being the last, and B having some pointers in there, and we go ahead and increment the length like we did in the last few examples. So now my state is pretty straightforward. Okay, last column here, first node is pointing at A, last node is pointing at C, and the length of the node is three. Looking at that in a little bit more detail, at the actual pointers within the nodes, well, first is A. A next is pointing to null. A last is pointing to B. Last is pointing to C. The next of C is pointing to B, and the C last is pointing back at null, and the length is 3. We can just repeat this operation over and over again, but I think you can get the idea of how the queue itself is structured and how the pointers are used. Remembering that the order at which you do the, um, do the, the changes and the pointers and redirect the pointers is important. Because if you redirect the last pointer before you can use it, before, before, while it's still needed, you no longer have access to it. So that order is important. 
Conclusion, good old FIFO, first in, first out. It's not that hard to code the NQ and DQ operations of a, note, of a, of a queue. The queue.length is a great indicator because whether the node, the queue has 0, 1, or 2, or 3 nodes in it, you're going to use a different process. Queues, by the way, have an enormous number of potential uses in computers everywhere. You can't do, you know, messaging and queuing and file access and mail and buffers, all that rely on the ability to build solid and efficient queues. That's the queue. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening. Good programming.